Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and in the next three videos I'm going to go over the process of how I've created this head from the basic start of a Z-sphere. So I'm just going to drag out a Z-sphere on screen, like so. And I'm going to go into Edit so it makes this tool available. Um, I'm now going to go to where it says Z-sketching and turn that tool on. So Edit Sketch. And that will allow me to actually draw on this mesh. But I want the symmetry there, as you can see, by pressing X on my keyboard, uh, so that I build up both sides of the mesh at the same time. Um, so yeah, you get symmetry on both sides. Um, if we press the frame tool, I just click then, or the move tool down the sides, you'll notice that this affects the camera. So you've got uh, a move which will pan, uh, a scale which will zoom in and out and rotate, which also if you click off of the mesh at the side of it, um, it will actually work in the viewport. Um, I'm just using a smooth tool at the moment to blend things back and that's, that's basically just the shift key which is assigned to pretty much every brush within ZBrush. Uh, and it allows you to just smooth the surfaces back um, to a, a good standard. Um, <clears throat> What I'm now doing is just uh, shrinking down the reticle and using the smooth tool again. Um, basically, you can increase and decrease the size of the reticle by using the bracket keys, which are next next to the letter P on your keyboard. Um, and it, it just allows you to kind of either bulk up your brush so you can add more geometry or make refined marks on your model. So if you use that in conjunction with the uh, smooth tool, you can add in information in and then use the smooth to blend it back. So as you can see, I'm just bulking out a little bit of information. I'm not actually going to make a full character. I'm just making a head for this example. It's going to cover the majority of the sort of tools that I need. Um, and yeah, it's going to be the work process that needs to happen. So if you press A on your keyboard, you'll notice that it goes from Z sketching into actual mesh like this. And if you want to edit that, you need to go to the Make Poly Mesh 3D. And again, you need to turn on your symmetry because once you go into that process, it turns the symmetry off. So I've got a model I can work with. Uh, and you'll just notice that I'm going to the Rotate tool on the top toolbar. Uh, and the difference between these and the ones down the side toolbar is that they basically affect the actual mesh. They don't affect the camera like the ones on the side toolbar. So as you can see, I'm pulling around the rotate in different angles and it's stretching the mesh. I can scale it up and down like so. And if I exported this mesh out, it would actually change its position or its size. Okay, so the ones in the top toolbar, these three, basically change its position. The ones in the side toolbar change the camera's position. So I'm just going to make use of the clay tool here. And this is one of the main tools that you're going to need to make use of. Um, one of the main things that students do when they start with ZBrush is they have the intensity far too high. They have it at say 50%. 50 and it's good for bulking up areas, but you want to look at using I don't know, about five or six, uh, which will give you far more control when you start adding information to your meshes. So again, just using that smooth tool to blend the surface and using the clear tool in combination with it to actually build up information. Okay, so as you can see, <clears throat> I'm just brushing back some of this bumpiness that I've got on the mesh, using that clear tool to build up and refine it and I'm not overly fussed around the you know the, the actual shape of it just at the moment I'm just roughing it out and getting a, a blocked object there okay so um, what I think I'll do now is talk a bit about reference so if you are going to make use of reference which you should be doing um, I, I've got a multi monitor setup but you're looking for massive images that you can make use of. So you can really get in there and see the eye information, all the pores, 
hair, you know, eyelashes, stuff like that. Um, you don't have to make a character um, that looks exactly like a photograph, but if you are going to do uh, an, an image of a person, it's good to get side view and a front view that line up. So areas like the nose, the eyes, the mouth, if you can get it with a similar sort of area, that would be good. Ideally, avoid stuff like this. Uh, students tend to get a lot of pixelated images. You're after good, clean images. So something like this would be ideal, yeah? And as I say, I'm on a multi-monitor setup, so I've got my reference on a different screen and I'm working on this one. Okay, so what I'm now going to look at doing is um, adding in some eyes. So what we'll do is append in two spheres. Now, the way that I've uh, said things in lectures is basically the head should be five eyeballs wide. So I'm just going to scale this thing down and this is going to act as the center eyeball so that I can get a rough indication of how big the head will be. So I just I think that's a little bit too big. So I'll just take it down a little bit further. And I'm just going to duplicate that and move to the side. So with the move tool, use the outside edge to actually uh, select one of those little circles uh, and you can rotate it round into any position and then use the middle circle to actually move it around as you've just seen there. Now that I've got those two eyeballs, I can delete the middle one. Um, and rather than trying to move both the eyeballs back into position, I'm going to move the head. Um, and in order to do this, I'm just going to press W on my keyboard and then press the Alt key to move it into position. And there we go. The head and the eyes are kind of sat on top of each other as they need to be. So I'm just going to kind of push back a little bit with the clay tool using the alt key uh, to push back the geometry and then you know if you let go of the alt key and you start using it again um, it will start adding mesh to it. Um, the next main tool that you're going to need to make use of is this one the move tool um, and it, it just allows you to pull geometry around so effectively so if you use that in conjunction with the clay tool you should be able to start building up uh, a lot of information on your meshes pretty quickly and pretty effectively. Okay, so this this head isn't really resembling the reference material that I've got um, that I've just shown you. Uh, and for the time being, I think this is going to be the end of this video. So thanks for listening.